Welcome to today's Answering the Call. I'm really excited about today. <laughs> I always am, but today I'm kind of on fire about this topic I've been with for the last week or so. Uh, so I'm Peggy O'Neill, and if, if you're new to Answering the Call or new to these videos, I'm the founder of Answering the Call and also the founder of what's called Wisdomary Leading, which is a way of leading our lives, leading organizations, leading communities, based on the radical uh, new understanding of how to lead as well as, and it's based on the new game-changing understanding of the nature of reality as understood by science as well as the great wisdom traditions. So today will be a topic that's right in line with leading in a way where we're aligned with wisdom, where we're leading with wisdom. So welcome. And what we do with here specifically in the Facebook group answering the call is we answer that call to know who we truly are. So if there's any longing in our lives, that's a calling to know who we truly are. And then the second aspect of that is to know, well, and what are we here to accomplish? What am I here to accomplish or to give or to be? It's not necessarily a doing. It could be a being. So that's what we do here in the group and welcome. So if you're live and I see somebody's already said, hi, Sharon, I'm very happy you're here. So if you're here live, please uh, say hi. If you're watching this on replay, please put in hashtag replay. Either way, if you have any questions, comments, please ask them, make comments and I will always reply. So today what we're exploring is specifically uh, the topic is, um, uh -oh, what did I talk what did I title this? I'm moving around here a little bit today because I've got several things in front of me. So the topic is, yeah, what are we losing and what is there to gain? So what I mean by what are we losing is that there are some human capacities that we're actually losing. And I'll go into that a little bit. And then what is there to gain? What does it mean to be fully human? If we quit losing capacities, stop that and then discovered who we truly are and started expanding capacities. Oh my gosh, incredible possibilities to gain for us personally, for our families, for our organizations, our communities, and the world, and really the universe. So uh, we're gonna talk about, so I said I would go more into depth about the urgency and gravitas I'm feeling that I'm inviting us all to feel given what's occurring in the world and also offer what I believe to be the underlying basis for the poly crisis, which is a so simultaneous occurrence of several catastrophic events. This is an incredible, op incredibly opportune time to become more fully human and enhance our innate, brilliant and wise human capacities. And by being aware of what is happening, knowing who we truly are and listening for guidance, we can discover what we are each here called to do and to be. And I'll offer some ways to begin or to continue depending on where you are now. So, so the depth and the urgency and the gravitas I'm feeling. So I, I, um, I will post this article in here too in case you haven't read the article that I sent out on email this week. But, uh, but there, in there there's a video and um, that I, well, I have two videos, one's to 60 minutes and another is to a, a, a video uh, about um, the AI dilemma. And that's what I'm referencing. And it, 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 they, they, with great gravitas themselves, start talking about the, what's happening with AI, including that there's a lot happening with AI that we don't understand, that we don't know. And they say that 50% of AI researchers say if AI continues in the way that it's continuing, there's a 10% chance that humans will be extinct, will go extinct. And that, did I say that right? 50% of researchers say there's a 10% chance. And they emphasize that by saying if 50% of airplane engineers said there's a 10% chance the plane is going to crash, you wouldn't get on it. So that's how serious what's happening with AI, and that's just AI, what's happening. And that AI can really take over uh, our, our country, if you're in the United States, take over in the world, become more like what's happening in China, where it's a more, much more authoritarian state, everything is followed 
um, AI follows every move that you make, uh, and then the, the government is able to keep track of that and decide if you're an in-person or out-person, my paraphrasing. So it's that sort of thing. I mean, this is very serious uh, that AI alone can determine elections in the future. Yes, they're saying that whoever has the most money or the biggest AI machine, I don't, I'm not literate on the, the, the computer terminology, but that's what's going to decide the election in 2028. I don't care who you're for. Do we really want the money in the AI, that equipment and the money that funds the biggest one to decide our country, the future of our country? So that's part of it. The World Economic Forum has put out a report and it says specifically this, the world is facing connected risks that threaten a polycrisis. The cost of living crisis is the most immediate and severe global risk. Climate-related risks are the biggest future threat facing the world. A polycrisis could have catastrophic consequences, including armed conflict. And then they go into some specific ones. I'm going to go to another page here. I know you can't see, but I'm moving around a little bit. And that the top 10 risks in two years, cost of living, natural disasters, geoeconomic confrontation, failure to mitigate climate change, erosion of social cohesion and societal polarization. So that's part of that's the AI. And then on that's the top five, they, they listed 10. Um, and so I, I can post this uh, article in, in the comments. In the top 10, I mean, sorry, in 10 years, the top five are failure to mitigate climate change, failure of climate change adaptation or adaption, uh, natural disasters and extreme weather events, biodiversity loss and ecosystem collapse, large-scale involuntary migration. So you'll notice even in the top five and ten years that they're not mentioning AI. So that's interesting that, that somehow even in, in the World Economic Forum is missing this, this big <laughs> looming issue. Sorry, I just joked to myself. This big looming issue. And so, <coughs> sorry. But, but this isn't so much about AI. I mentioned that and mentioned, <coughs> mentioned that we want to be alert to AI and all these things are happening in the poly crisis. Because what's the basis of all of them? Every single one of them. Whether, whether it's the, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> so sorry. Whether it's the AI concern or any of these other things, what's at the root of all of them? I'll see if somebody wants to answer here. I'll bet Sharon knows what my answer is. <laughs> if you want to, if you want to post it, Sharon. Even with AI, what they're talking about right now, the top four or five companies that are that are in this AI development, they call it a race. A race, like they're saying that for them to survive this race, they've got to come out on top. And even one of the CEOs said this is a frantic race. So exactly, Sharon, I knew you'd know. We're separate. We Sorry, that we believe that we're separate. Yes, that's the basis for all of this. You can tell I get all... So, so until enough of us know in our being, not conceptually, so a lot of us, a lot of people, and a lot of communities have the concept that we're all one, you know, with globalization, a lot of spiritual communities talk about we're all one. That's different, a concept between it, but uh, uh, that's distinct from a knowing, a lived experience that I know I'm one with everything. It's challenging to get there. Okay, well, we have a lot of challenges in our lives. This is just a, like a fun challenge. I don't really want to know who I am during this lifetime want to be that experience, be that oneness, be that being. And as we know who we truly are, then other ways of being with regard to all these crises start becoming available to us. How is that? Well, we have a different understanding of ourselves, a different understanding of other people. So now our relationships just inherently start being different. It takes a little time, sure. But inherently, they start being different because we now don't see them as, we don't, we don't, well, we don't see somebody as separate, but then, but as long as we believe we're separate, then we've got to defend ourselves. We've got to protect ourselves. We've got to keep the other at a distance at some level. 
We've got to uh, be, often we have to be right. Disagreements turn into conflicts because we're then positioned instead of realizing, oh, there are 8 billion of us on the planet, or if there's a meeting, there are 5 or 10 of us with 5 or 10 different perspectives of this one being. So we would want to hear all the perspectives of this one being in the room because we're all equally the one being, just each a different perspective. And then we treat the planet, it's all this climate, uh, all these climate related issues, how we treat the planet and resources and, and how we want to live. Those issues, we, we start framing them differently and thinking about them differently because we're one being with the earth, with the whole universe. So relationships and our ability to think about how to be in the world and look at these issues start changing. Um, let's see. So I said I'd go into more depth of the urgency gravitas. Uh, let's see. What else about this? Um, oh, and so in the article that I'm going to post here, but so I'm talking about those from like world issues, world crises um, that are right in front of us and the AI. But there are other elements to this that we're giving up, what we're losing, these human capacities. So one of the human capacities that I'm just referring to is related to AI, which is uh, the capacity to, to for a democracy, the capacity to um, you know, decide how we want to live. Um, and then with the then with climate, the, the capacity to be one being and then to, to relate to each other in these crises in that way. And taking it down more specifically, people are starting to put chips into their brains so that they don't have to do certain things. So that so that the so that the, just through the the brain interacting with a computer rather than putting my hands on the computer, that the computer will do things. Well, we have the capacity to develop that. Yeah, it might take a little work to develop our own ability to maneuver a computer without touching the keyboards, but we have those capacities. Drugs are taking away some of our capacities to heal ourselves. I'm not, there's a place for drugs. I'm not making drugs wrong, but, but yeah, I know that that kind of cancels that out. But, but, what I, but what happens, I think, is is a lot a lot of us just take the drugs without realizing what I'm saying right here. So I'm trying to help educate what, what I'm about to say, which is with some drugs, it actually takes away our body's abilities. And over time, it can become permanent. My mother's a great example. She was on an antidepressant for many, many years. She never could get off of it as hard as she tried. And she couldn't cry for the last 20, 30 years or so of her life. And she was miserable because she couldn't cry. She knew she was missing out on this human expression. And it just really was hard for her. It's hard to be with her to know that. Um, now there are times I know with depression and, and all that, 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 that drugs are useful. And, and there are lots of times that maybe, like she probably, if she'd had the right if she knew what we know now, and if she knew what she knew now about the drug, I don't think she would have ever gotten on it. And there are other ways to work with things like depression. And there are other drugs that we use for blood pressure and so on that are also diminishing. And what are they diminishing the capacity of? Decision making. Mm -hmm. They're impairing how we're making decisions. And those are just two classes of drugs. I don't know, classes is the wrong word, sorry, but two types of drugs. Um, then, um, then I saw a commercial on TV last night. You can't sleep. Well, insert a chip that'll help you sleep. So we're just losing these capacities over and over again because we're not using them and we're replacing them with a chip. Another one is being able to navigate the world. We we had a national uh, national. We had a natural instinct to be able to navigate, orient. We'd look at maps. We'd remember where somebody lived, and we'd uh, or where we were trying to go. We'd think it through, and then we'd get there with a map or with our memory. And we're not using that anymore because of Google Maps. So we're using losing certain abilities to with our uh, of that. And those those same abilities are related to early onset Alzheimer's that we're losing. Okay, so I probably said that enough, but it's but it but and and again, 
we're losing that. So first we can stop losing it by stopping, by being aware of it. And then let's say we still want to use Google Maps, maybe not as often, or maybe we do something else with our brain to keep that ability to orient and navigate intact. And, and so it's, it's, this is an invitation for us to start being more judicious in how we take on these various seemingly innocuous, easy things that are diminishing our capacities. Um, let's see. Okay. And again, I've gone on about this. I probably should have spent the last 15 minutes just saying over and over again. And this, but this is because we believe we're separate. It's because we believe we're separate. All of it. Um, if we know we're one, then we engage with all, everything I've said in different ways. Um, so we can be more fully human. So if the first thing is, is what I've already said, to be aware of what's happening and then maybe make different choices around that. And of course, if we know who we truly are, then we know we're not individually choosing. However, as we're influenced by information, then there is something making a choice, the one being that we are making a choice. So the more we're influenced by other possibilities than what's just being thrown at us, then choices, I believe, will be made in alignment with what's going to most support us in developing these human capacities because we naturally want to develop. That's Haven't you noticed that? We, we want to get better at things. We want to do things. And and let's pay paying attention to what are we actually taking on. So there, like I said, there are capacities to um, to get things to move without that takes some work. But there are capacities that we have to get things to move without a chip in our brain. Um, capacities to love more deeply, to to be more compassionate naturally. We don't have to develop those capacities as we know who we truly are and live as that. They naturally are enhanced. Um, uh, other capacities, um, let's see. Oh, see, I think our body, and I've been reading a book, and I know Sharon's been, uh, I've been rereading Sharon. Thank you. The, the book, it's Original Wisdom by Robert Wolf. I've been asking people to read it for probably 20 years. Uh, thanks to Sharon and I having a conversation recently, I pulled it back out. And it emphasizes we have a natural ability to heal. We're losing a lot of that ability. We see our bodies in a separate way. So ability to heal our bodies, ability to intuit. And I, and I don't mean, there's nothing wrong with learning the skill of intuition. That's fine. But I'm talking about a deeper intuition, that knowing uh, and sensing into where's the world wanting to go? And I don't mean... Uh, society world. I mean, like, where's the universe? Where's the universe? Where's consciousness wanting to go? Where's awareness wanting to go? To be able to sense into that for ourselves individually, as well as for, again, our families, our communities, our, the world. So we have that ability to sense into, to listen, to know, to be guided. We're losing that capacity. How are we losing it? Because we're not using it. You know, that old saying, lose it or use it. Uh, use it or lose it. So we're not using that natural ability to intuit, to know, to know in all our being. Oh, the other uh, thing that we're losing is if we do start using chat, AI, whatever it's called, sorry, whatever it's called, if we use that a lot, say, oh, you write the article for me, then what are we losing? Our ability to think through what we want to say, critical thinking, deeper thinking, more creative thinking. We lose that, and that's part of that ability to sense into, to know, to listen, to be moved by, to let consciousness express through us what it wants to express. That's the capacity that I'm excited about and have been um, inviting us to now for years, so that we know that and live as that. But we're, you know, we're losing that capacity if we're, more and more if we let other uh, other things, AI, do that sort of work for us. All right, so by being aware of what's happening, knowing who we truly are, and listening for guidance, we can discover what we're each called to do and to be. So I'm basically just putting a cap on what I just said about, well, so so many people right now feel like, feel lonely, like there's lack of meaning and purpose in life, 
And yet, as we live in the way I'm inviting us to today, we just naturally experience meaning and purpose because we know we're being lived. We're expressing consciousness. And as we live that way and know that, then we start sensing, oh, this is where to go with my life. Now, we typically don't get like 10 years down the road where we're going to be. It's not that usually. I mean, I've heard of people who have known, oh, I'm just supposed to build this massage center and they just knew and then that happened. My experience is more subtle. <laughs> Not real happy that it's more subtle, but that is my, but my, for how, how I'm guided is more like a step at a time. Sometimes it's a baby step at a time, but, but that we listen and trust because we know we're one. And so we listen and we take the step and we take the step and then so, oh, that's what's been happening. And then, or that's what, and then maybe, oh, that's where I'm going. That's how it works. And yet that's exciting. It's adventurous. What does Joseph Campbell say? He says when people say, or he said, what do people say when they want more meaning and purpose in their lives? What they're really saying is want to be more alive. This is a way to be alive. To let consciousness guide us to know. Be with wonder. I wonder what's going to happen. I wonder where I'm going. Not knowing. Oh, this is the next step. It's, it's incredible and valuable. So ways to continue or begin or to begin wherever you are. So uh, several, quite a few of you have been in, really engaged with this and continue to be with this. So my invitation for you is to, um, well, you might read this article that I'll post if you haven't read it from the email, just to re-inspire you and to, um, to, and to you know, let this seem in, in what I'm talking about here and concerned about here. Uh, but to but to spend that quiet time listening, thoughts will arise. You just say, relax the focus of attention and s just sit and get used to spending five minutes here, ten minutes there, being still and quiet and listening, deeply listening and listen all day long. Be alert all day long. Because we're getting signs, signals, messages all day long. So staying alert, paying attention. And again, the more that we say relax the focus of attention, then the more we're, we're there, the more we're present, the more we're there for those nuances. Um, if you're just beginning, then I encourage you to, um, to read Being Aware of Being Aware. And in one of the, um, I mean, in the article, I mentioned another book and, and a video or two to watch. So that's where I'd start if you're just beginning. Um, if you want more than that right now, of course, I have the Praxis. Would love for you to join the Praxis. But if, if you don't want to uh, join the Praxis, but you are you say, well, I'm already doing what you've already said, then put a comment in there and um, and I'll uh, offer something else. But those are the places to start. So I want to leave, leave it with that. All right, so are there any questions or comments? So Sharon, you've been talking to me. Okay, it is interesting that by relying on technology, I'm seeing if I've got this in the wrong, yeah. It is interesting that by relying on technology, i.e. AI, we are separating ourselves even more rather than integrating ourselves into the oneness that we are. Yes, yeah, separating from ourselves and then separating from others. Now we're working with machines, not working so much with other people. Uh, and, and of course, just that sense of working with a machine, we, we create more experiences of working with a thing and not working. And, and so even then when we see other people, we might be more relating to them that way. I mean, we're seeing that with people only because we're so immersed in phones. So we, we've become, a lot of people, become less relationship oriented because we're used to relating to technology. So then we relate to other people and other things like technology. It just happens out of habit of how we interact over and over. Um, but yeah, but mainly from ourselves is what I'm emphasizing today. I know that's what you're talking about, Sharon. And then I choose to be informed but not give energy to the information that separates me rather than opens me to the possibilities that exist. Oh, I love what you're saying there. That's great. Yeah, we want to be informed. We want to know what's going on and then um, and stay and to stay open. Yeah, not get um, not get sad or discouraged by it. Be inspired by it. So that was part of the one, the other half of the title. What is there to gain? To be more fully human. To s maybe solve these plant uh, these uh, planet planetary issues. And we don't know. We don't know where consciousness wants to go. That's okay. 
We, but by knowing who we truly are, uh, uh, we give consciousness the best chance to do what we, our minds would like us to do, to live together more, uh, or at least what I, my mind would like. I'd like to see us get along more and better. It's not up to me. It's not up to you. It's not up to consciousness. I mean, it's up to consciousness. However, we can, we can at least live now in a more loving way peaceful, authentic, authentically inspired way and be happy, loving, and peaceful as we do so. And then we'll see where we go. We, we, we won't know. But, but, but yes, because that's what we all long for. We want to feel connected to ourselves and to others. So exactly what you're saying, Sharon, not get caught up in what's happening, to be informed by it, and then be able then to say, how do I want to live? What am I going to listen for? I want to relate to myself and other people. And yes, then there's focus, work to be done, so to speak, to live that way. And that's fine. Um, yeah, and then stay open to the possibilities that exist. Yeah, that's why I'm, that's why I'm having this conversation. Because so many people, I'm there's nothing wrong. Nobody's done anything wrong, but it's exciting, fun. I see people posting all these fun things, these exciting things. And I just had lunch with somebody telling me that she'd gotten a bio written up about herself. Half of it was totally wrong. The other half was accurate. And somebody had actually sent her an email sending similar information that was wrong about her. So there's a lot of this AI is wrong. So so being aware of that and, and paying attention so that we, we you know, so we don't, again, get caught up in that because it's fun, exciting, and it's distracting. So what we all long for is that peace, happiness, enjoyment of life. And so for a while, AI can seem like it's fulfilling that, but it won't be permanent over there. It won't be sustainable over there because it's all right here in us. Okay. Thank you so much for being with me today, with us today, as we explore more deeply, what are we losing? And yeah, what is there to gain? Oh, the, the thing that's most exciting for me out of all this is to be more fully human. What does that really mean? Part of it does mean experiencing it all, the sadness, the excitement, the, the anxiety that I can feel right now around what's possible, what's happening with AI and what it might mean. That's my egoic mind playing out there. That's okay. That's part of us living here. And but I'm aware of that. I know that's what's playing out. And but I can also be here with the um, discussing the potential and and how do we want to live? Not because it's right or better, but so that we get to live now in the way that we're inspired to live. Be here who we're how we're here to live, and um, and not just go unconsciously down this path. Um, okay, so, so thank you again for being here. Uh, let's see, anything else today? Nope, I'll post those two things in the comments. Thank you so much for being here today. And uh, look, for any comments you have too after you read the articles, watch the videos, love for you to post them here. Oh, let's see. You're welcome, Sharon. Thank you for being here. All right. See everybody later.